appropriate uh, uh, data cleaning as well as data uh, engineering exploration part. So the next step, once you have done all with that, the next step is to build your model. For, for the model building part, you should have to have the certain uh, specific uh, features which is uh, which you have determined that they are most informative for the uh, dependent variable uh, for the independent variable or the one which you are going to predict so let us see uh, the notebook which i'm having for this session So as you can see, I can have uh, the notebook here, and it says like I uh, have uh, extracted the what is needed in data data frame. Then I should have to go to the basic cleaning and data processing part to handle those things. And from my point. Here, we should have to think of two things. You just I, I want to give emphasis on them. And from those, the first one is the, uh, apart from this handling, exploring data, cleaning data, you should have to prepare the future engineering part. So for the future engineering part, you have uh, two things. Like, first of all, you should have to select important features for your model as if you can see that this is uh, uh, what you call it, the data set is huge so the first thing you should have to encode those categorical variables into numbers because our machine learning model doesn't take any uh, uh, string values so as we have done in the last week for the text analysis part we are going through the uh, uh, encoding part like vector text vectorizing using TFIDF or one note encoding. So here, the same is true here. So we should have to, I have used as an example, this label encoder. So th this label encoder is a built-in Python function. You can extend that from the uh, label encoder class. Then after that, uh, from the sklearn SQL library. Then after that, you will go to for the object creation and you will pass all your attributes which are uh, having these categorical variables then they will it will automatically see each unique uh, values and it will automatically convert those values into uh, numbers uh, but sometimes this uh, label encoder may not be feasible because when you have uh, more and more uh, unique values it becomes useless so you should have to think of like other alternative mechanisms like doing these things so from here you can see that i have converted all the uh, columns uh, which are having yes and no values so this label encoder can help me to parse the string value to the uh, numeric values so the next is just to select appropriate attributes so uh, can you go down so for the future selection part I have used this SQLR future selection k based uh, uh, class, and I have used this chi, uh, chi squared uh, future selection method, and to to predict these uh, in, which are important features for my problem, and I have ident identified that my data set tells me or the main goal which I need this model is to predict whether the patient is admitted or not. So in order to get that one, I should have to have this uh, 
independent variables as well as I should have to identify those dependent variables when we say these uh, as dependent and independent. So uh, the one which you call it as every features is uh, uh, every value is an independent. Uh, the y value is dependent on each features. And then the the actual value which I need to predict and the uh, features are independent features. So I should have to uh, figure out these two things before doing that. Then after that, I can go to the uh, chi square test and I can build my model. So for, uh, rather than this chi square, you have a decision tree classifier or many, many more feature selection techniques out there. So you can use one of them by referring them. And from this, we can see that those, uh, I can print the features and their uh, importance label. So uh, you can select the top most uh, important features. So I have selected nine important features for my model. After that, the selected features are parsed into like as, as a selected feature for training my model. Then the next phase will be going to down to normalizing the values of those features. If you have an outliers, so I have used the uh, to answer your question uh, for feature selection purpose. I have used the um, chi square method, which can calculate the uh, features based on their chi square value so you can read more about this chi square you can get deep explanation about that but you can have like uh, this pca or um, like extra decision tree classifier to get or uh, you can get like uh, uh, what you call it i forget it uh, sorry um so there are different methods which can help you to uh, extract these features. And once you have those features, I, I, I have parsed them into my uh, training and test set and I have saved them into my drive. So I can access whenever I need the data set. So this, the next is to model the uh, uh, this future scalar part as well as the to model the modeling part so for the uh, modeling part uh, here i have two parts like the first one which i'm scaling or which i use the scaling uh, methods or this min max scaling method to scale my features and uh, to uh, minimize my model bias towards this uh, variable uh, inputs so uh, this may somehow decrease uh, the variability nature of my data set. So I have used the simple min max scalar method. And once I have done with that, I should have uh, to keep them for further use. So I have saved in Pickle as well as in JBlog Live, uh, Joblib, then it will be stored in my data set, uh, my data, then as well as I can, I can pass to my uh, training uh, as well as test uh, data sets for this uh, uh, scalar. Then once the scalar are done, but uh, one thing here is you don't uh, uh, give your uh, Y value or uh, target value to the scalar because the target value is either zero or one. It's sometimes it's a class, so a class level which you need to predict. So you don't need, you don't have to need to uh, scale your uh, uh, target value. So here I have used a random classifier uh, to train uh, or to get whether certain patient is uh, like admitted or uh, it's not admitted. So uh, I can create that random forest object, then I will pass the training, training values, then it will start to learn. 
After that, they, it will predict the moral values, and here I have the precision and recall. All those details are there. So overall, my model performance is on the uh, test data is about 52%. Okay. Uh, the hell you can go. Hello, please. Can you can, can you use your cursor to know which part you are talking about, please? Okay, just my connection is poor. That's why. Uh, so here I am in the modeling part. So I have used the random classifier just to create the object, and then I have parsed the training set and test sets uh, for the a model and I have saved the model for the later use because once you develop your model you should have to use on the daily basis or while you are uh, deploying those things into web page so you should have to load uh, you don't have to need uh, retraining because we are using this stored data or while you are working with live data you should have to process everything at the live manner so for the time being I have used this batch processing stuff so i have set the model in the pickle format then the result i have reported with this precision and recall or the uh, classification report uh, mechanism so here the precision tells uh, tells me uh, how many of the correctly predicted cases are actually uh, turned out to positive and i have uh, around 16% and for my levels and I have uh, almost uh, for each level I have uh, uh, 0.6 or 16% for 0 and uh, for 1 44% and for 2 59% and the recall is also there so based on this I, I, I can train the model so the next thing is once you have done with your model, you should have to show your model result, your model with some sort of mechanisms. So for today's purpose, I, I have uh, chosen the stream lead. So uh, as you have seen last time, your stream lead can show your data representation. And Kate, you can go. How do you know, um, okay, between the precision recall and the F1 score, how do you know or what metric should you focus on? So like, are these values low or how do we interpret them, the values on the screen? It's based on your problem. For my problem, 50% uh, is enough because like if you can take the covid case and if there are too many uh, false positives are there so it becomes dangerous so you should have to think of like the, the, the related to your problem and for me just admit admission is all about permitting so i can accept this uh, uh, accuracy score or model score for 0 0.5 it's almost 50 percent so that's fine and those uh, most of the time these recall values may can take you the actual positives which can be uh, which we were able to predict as correctly uh, correctly by our models so uh, some some of your focus should have to go to the recall part uh, based on your problem, maybe these metrics will be changed. There is no rule of thumb to choose uh, whether your model is accurate or not. At this level, sometimes models become accurate on their point and then they're uh, below 50%. And sometimes models become needs almost 99% accuracy. But the acceptable one, you should have to think of like to get uh, model result above 70 and 75%. I have addressed your question. Uh, yes, you have. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay, you can go. Uh, sorry, can you explain your question? I see, for instance, looking at that column for precision, hmm. uh, it is not, I think it should be like one, summing by column, but it is not one. It is somehow different. Which one? Okay, I think those zero, one, two, just those are six, the six, labels six, which I'm uh, the labels which I'm going to predict or the columns or from my data value. I mean, it's open to 16 plus it's open to 44 plus it's open to 59. So, it's not one. when you add them, yeah. Okay, I didn't see that. So let us figure out. Okay, I, I will. I will see it. So the next thing is uh, about deploying this uh, model into Streamlit. So for Streamlit, you can have uh, different labels and different uh, pages. Based on that, you can visualize your data as you have done in the last week. So here, I just wanted to show you the simple uh, Streamlit app that can take uh, inputs from user and it can tells you whether you are admitted or not. So uh, sorry sorry I wanted to put it short. Uh, just to like answer provide more context to um Eliphas um, questions. So what's what you have here what you have is 0 0.16, 0 0.44. When you add them, they're not supposed to give you um, one. No. What what they're supposed to give you is for this zero that you have here, that's a particular class from the um, target color, and then one is another class, and then two is another class. So this is like a um, multi-class classification where we have um, three classes. So um, and then 0 0.16 that you have here is a precision score for predicting if uh, for the predicting the value zero for that particular uh, observation so when you like pass in your data point and then you predict on it the precision score for when it is equals to zero says that it's 0 0.16 that's like 16 percent so it's like 16 percent uh, sure that this is the value that is supposed to be so what we'll conclude is that um this is not um uh, this is not like a good uh uh, model and um, for the for predicting zero because 16 out of 100 is kind of small in terms of estimating how sure the model is and then that's what we have for zero and then for one we have 0 0.44 and that's like 44 percent uh, sure that it belongs to the class uh, one and then 59 percent sure that it belongs to class uh, two so that is it what, what you're saying in the initial is like I think this is supposed to give you one, but no. Um, the actual value, the highest that you can get for precision for the class zero is supposed to be one. Is, it, is this clear? Does that answer your question? Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you very much. OK, continue. Can you show us the... Let me... Should I present the code for the Streamlit deployment? Uh, just the Streamlit page and the code. Okay, give me a minute. So uh, here is the Streamlit demo page for my model I've built. Thank you. 
Nyt oli työidän fysentis. Okei. So the model can have this uh, uh, the, the stream lead page. I just designed in simple way. Just to, it, it will accept the values in the left side. Then it will uh, predict while you are triggering uh, uh, what you call it this uh, status. So here um, I can just take a sample because I didn't remember the outlines, but because there are numbers, so I can fill randomly. Basically, you can include it just to show you, you are that possible to include your model in your uh, stream lead up as well, rather than just employing these uh, uh, static image. Just you can make it somehow interactive with users. So uh, here I can fill random values for the uh, patients, uh, the features, and then from my data observation, there are two uh, uh, what do you call it categorical values. Uh, the one is to set the chains and which it has having this unique value as a new or chain. And the next one is the is if the patient is medic uh, diabetes medication or not. So here I have two options. So I can I can, I can take one of them. Then I'll try to see to in order to see the result, I should have to press the button and it will process for me then uh, if this patient uh, it will tell me this patient should have to be admitted so this is a simple demo to show you how to integrate the uh, stream lit up with your uh, model building part so for uh, the code for this I, I, I will share it on the github so basically nothing new is there, but just simply adding those uh, sidebars with your whatever you needed. And let me Sorry for the delay, but I'm not able to share. Are you sharing your screen? Yeah, I'm trying to share my screen for the stream lead up. So is that visible or? You can increase the font size to be better. So. What about now? Yeah, much better. Thank you. So here I have a, a method called an app. So for the stream lead part, so this app will uh, encapsulate all my uh, stream lead application uh, infrastructure. So I have I have the load by uh, the load method, which can load the uh, stream lead. Uh, the model which I have trained and the, the scalar paths. So I have two outputs from here, like the scalar and the model. Then uh, the next is for the inference part, for the prediction part. So I, I will I, here I will get the columns from the Streamlit application. Then those columns values will be passed to the data frame using this function. Then once I have uh, converted with the scalar and I get the x value, then once I have uh, converted this from the for the futures, so I will try to predict the values. So if it's going to be equal to zero, it, can, it will not be admitted. And if it's going to be one, it will be admitted. Just this is a message 
to display for the user. And here are the static meters. So you can specify your title, uh, your information related to your apps. So the next is uh, uh, to, to accept the sidebar. So I, I have this stated that uh, from string is sidebar, then number I need the number input. So I can specify that one here. I have stated to three or more uh, parameters there. So the mean value starts from one and the max value. So it will be uh, changed according to your uh, need. So here also you can specify some uh, helps for users. So the same is true for nine columns. After that, you're going to have the for the uh, to accept these uh, radio button values, you can you should have to check if, uh, if value whether they are checked or not. Then, once I go with all things from users, so I can uh, select those from using rows, the values, so the value can be converted into the features on the according to the future structure on my. Uh, training set. So based on that, I will st straightforwardly convert my uh, user input into my uh, feature columns. Then once I'm done with that, I will start to call the scalar and the model part, then the inference goes with that. And finally, the result will be displayed for users. And in this way, you can, you can, you can make your uh, uh, machine learning model more uh, interactive with users and also you can add the model uh, loss value or training uh, pictures as well as but for the time being i didn't include that uh, so if you have any question we can go or else i can proceed to the next question with integration with the uh, stream So once we are done with that, the next thing is how can we uh, containerize or how can we deploy our model into the cloud and how can we fix issues related to the uh, deployment issues because while you are working with your partner, as you can see, I'm having uh, Windows OS and uh, someone else having the Linux because uh, our worker loves to work with Linux. And someone have a Mac OS or there are different infrastructure like Azure or AWS cloud infrastructure. So in order to run your model seamlessly, you should have to have certain uh, packaging mechanisms and to incorporate your uh, model result and to deploy them in cloud base either or to run locally without any misconfiguration issue to solve that uh, uh, we can use this dockerization so the dockerization part Are you sharing your screen? We can't see it. Yeah, I'm just um, trying to share it because the delay, there is a delay between the uh, connection. So should I, should I share it? You can. And then you want to explain the doc, I guess. Yeah, just the PowerPoint.
So it's been the shared. idea yeah. of this localization is just to provide reproducibility of your uh, scripts by ensuring this interoperability uh, uh, idea and provide isolation between uh, containers like containers you can think of uh, a simple container which can transport different items but we are having one large container so that large container can be uh, uh, in order to try uh, to transport your items like you are having uh, uh, fruits and you are having soap you are having another item there inside the container so you should have to have certain uh, package or certain uh, packaging technique to isolate these fruits as well as uh, soaps from uh, being uh, uh, as if they are uh, going with each other but the idea behind this isolation is to make separate them even if they are going through the same container uh, the, we should have to avoid this contamination issue regarding to the uh, items because they are in different genre. So the same is true when we come back to our codes. So uh, you are uh, for your uh, organization, you have different models are running. So those different models are uh, run on a single cloud infrastructure or a single uh, machine which you are having in your hand. So, in order to have isolated uh, implementation of each uh, uh, models or each runs, you should have to think of like how can I uh, run these things separately. So, dockerization will help us in addressing these two basic issues while we are uh, developing models uh, for machine learning. So, then uh, for this dockerization part, so it have uh, three basic terms while we are talking about this Docker. So the first is, what is Docker? So Docker is uh, a tool which is designed to create or to deploy a running application by using these containers. So this Docker can guarantee us to create as well as to deploy, as well as to run your machine learning models uh, using these separate containers. So those containers will, uh, like you can think of a software package, they have the application code and they can have the uh, required libraries, they can have as well as the dependencies because uh, my machines, uh, in, uh, for example, if you can think of like, I'm using this code, the one I, which I'm developing for uh, uh, predicting diabetics, uh, patient admission but the idea, the thing is uh, my, the version of uh, uh, like you can call it job lab or escape escape lab in my machine is different from yours or from someone else in outside so just to make standardized things we should have to have to define this required libraries as well as required dependencies for uh, your package bundle. So your uh, containers should contain that as a package. And uh, in other words, your container should act like the running process of your image. And the Docker image is a, a blueprint, uh, like a template to run your docker container uh, file so it's an executable software package that can include everything needed to run your application and it becomes a container at a runtime while uh, you are changing this docker image into the container because you will have you will add different files like docker composer as well as the first thing is just you will start from the docker file so you will start to specify uh, like a blueprint of your overall package so this uh, docker file uh, is containing like where to start uh, while building your docker image uh, you should have to specify things uh, how to create this docker file so the first is where to start and the second is 
which one is the working directory of your uh, application as well as what are the requirements so you can specify those requirements and uh, the triggering action at the end so at the end of this uh, docker image and uh, your uh, uh, docker file should have to contain an instruction which needs to be executed uh, by the by your machine so you, basically these three terms are important for your uh, docker uh, dockerization step so in order to implement this dockerization for your package you first should have to have docker desktop so you, you should have to download that then you will install it based on your system requirement and it will have uh, it will need some additional dependencies if you are using uh, windows so you can follow the state guides there and in your uh, project structure you are you are having your uh, python scripts you are having your notebooks you are having everything in your data folder your model folder everything needed to implement your model so basically the additional thing which you are adding for the localization part is the requirement first and the foremost thing so what type of requirement uh, what type of libraries are required so you should have to specify those in order to get those uh, specifications you can add these uh, you can run these five frees on your conda or whatever you needed uh, whatever you are using on your terminal so it can show you the exact version of your uh, installed the exact version of your install uh, uh, package through file so you can extend them in order to create your requirements so you can select uh, i have used this sklearn so sklearn library which version and i have used this uh, pandas which version of pandas numpy and everything you should have to specify in the requirement text then the next thing once you are finished with this requirement you should have to add the docker file or the blueprint which can tell your docker what to do so this uh, contains like uh, informations which is uh, it have its own structure and the first one is it will tell you will tell your model where to start like just you can uh, write specify this by uh, the from command on the docker file so because i didn't have any previously trained model i will start the initial model from the python script so i have installed this i, I, I have my model my machine having this my python 3.7 so i will start from that then uh, you will expose to the port number so the port number will be your reference point to uh, access the docker files and to either to post or to publish your uh, docker image or docker Sorry, Malin. okay are you still using the slides because you're talking about the code yeah just i'm simply talking about the what you call it the docker file structure okay so should i present the code instead of the slide okay Yes, go on, I'm presenting it. Okay. Mm. So here there are three commands. So the from command, which I specify where to start, and the working directory or this slash app part. So your current working directory and copy requirements. Uh, this is to copy the requirements from the requirement file.txt file. So I have specified, uh, first of all, I have specified this requirement text.txt. Then uh, be before running your uh, 
a stream data application, you should have to first copy those into the Docker image file. Then you will start to run this uh, requirement.txt. So in your Docker image file, the same virtual environment will be created as your machine and it will install all the necessary requirement to your uh, uh, docker image file then the next is the to export the port number so default i have uh, specified the default uh, stream port number then this copy will do similar thing it can copy your uh, file directory and the encryption part is for the security so you should have to specify uh, uh, which one where to run and the streamlit and runs are for the uh, streamlit run as a, an instruction for your docker image file and uh, for the cmd part it's a direct instruction which can uh, interrelate your exposed streamlit run uh, instruction with your uh, app.py uh, or your current working directory dot py file then this is all about simple introduction about the docker file so what you will include this in your package then the next is uh, to start testing your model on the uh, local repository so to have this you can uh, start to build the image by using docker build um, command so this docker build command can use uh, it it will take you a tag as well as the uh, docker image name and to run or to publish your uh, docker file on your local host so you can you can you can use this run dot publish uh, docker run publish command so i have specified this the same port number for both internal and uh, public port number but it's possible to use different port number here then the next is to include your integration and development with github action and to add additional flavors on your uh, docker file but here, the additional thing here is that uh, you are you are also able to publish your uh, Docker file in Docker Hub or any uh, cloud uh, hosting uh, infrastructures like Azure or AWS or simple Heroku, which we are using now. And also, you can you can you can deploy your model uh, uh, in the local host as well. So these are the uh, introduction about this dockerization and related issue for the demo part. Our worker will show you how to uh, build this image and uh, post it into the uh, Heroku. So far, if you have any question. Awoka? Yes. Can you show them the deployment part for the Streamly? Mm. Okay. Um, Barak Sani has a question. Go right ahead. Oh, I don't. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, my question is are we to. Um, submit the Docker part today or which Saturday for the final submission? The, the final submission will include the Docker file. You don't have to okay. submit the Docker file today. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you. Just some introduction, just to make you familiar with the Docker issues. 
So next week you you will be gonna to submit this Docker as well as. Okay. Um, so just just a brief on how you can deploy the the model that you saw earlier that would uh, make it available as a live app and then you can like share the link to people and people can use it we we are going to be using the streamlit sharing option to share it but before you can do that they need they need you need to have like a, a requirement.txt file in your uh, github repository as well as an app.py file which would enable you to be able to like share the i mean deploy the app let me share my screen okay So the code that is um, responsible for building the app that we are about to see is this one here. We uh, is this uh, clear now? Thank you. Um, we have the we are importing the model result. The model result is the pi part that we have written here, and then we are importing the streamlit, of course, to create the front end part of our code. And then we are, we intend on creating two page. Well, we have some issues fixing the first page, so we are leaving that one out. And then the second page is the readmission prediction, which is using the model results from here. Um, we have the sidebar, which um, she has already talked about, and then we have to go to and the formatting. For the uh, display, this is what it looks like. She has explained all of this. So we have all of this ready, the code has been written. All we have to do is like run the app using the Streamlit run the app to the pipe. This will create a local server on our system, and then we should be able to uh, access it. This this you did in uh, week zero. Then we should be able to like access it on our um, system via a local server. I think it's already running. Yeah, it's, it's already running here. So this is the this is the result of the app. We have this, and then on clicking on this button, it gives us the prediction. So it runs the app, we wait for it, and then it says the patient will be readmitted. Uh, you can add more formality to this to make it more beautiful, but since it's just a demo, we just want to show you how to do it. And then to deploy this app so that so it is um, available online. We will be using the Streamlit um, sharing option, which allows us to uh, create a, an, an instance that is running on AWS, which we don't have access to, or we have access to the link that we can share with people and then they can use. And then we can like integrate a continuous integration, continuous deployment kind of workflow to it, so that we can monitor um, the changes that happens to our model and we're using the result of the model. So you, when when this app is running on your local device, uh, you, you click on the three um, horizontal bar here, and then you get a lot of options that allows you to run to clear the cache. In our case, we are now recording a screencast of the, the documentation we want to deploy this app. So we'll be clicking on the deploy this app button, and then this is supposed to take us to this page. And then since I've already integrated it with my uh, GitHub repository, we have something called diabetes prediction of Git, which is like a GitHub repository here, which says, okay. so, so this is what the repository looks like. It has the app.py and then it's the main branch. So, and that is what we get here after leaking the repository. We got the branch to the main, and then the, the file that is responsible for running the app is called app.py. If all of this is set and there are no issues, one of the issues that you might have is like probably it's unable to locate the app.py, or probably you have more than one branch and then you need to like select the branch here, or the requirement.txt file is missing. Because when you click on deploy, it's going to create a, an environment. For, it, for itself, that um, that it would then install all of the um, libraries that you have specified in the requirements.txt file. 
So I'm clicking on the deploy. Uh, what is this? Okay. So we we have um, this issue. We, I have to like to. I just I just deployed it. We have so uncommitted. Maybe it's just fine. Okay, so I'm just going to try again. Hopefully, it will work out fine. It's done hard. Okay, it's nice. Of okay, so click on that. It's going to stop. We wait for it to go. Then, when it's done, try to deploy. And then it says um up the on. So I had um, I had this issue earlier on, and then I had I had to like um, rewrite the code to fix it. But if you have all of this set and then uh, everything works out as it should be, you would have um, something similar to this, where it will create uh, the app for you, and then you get a link that you can like uh, go to and then access the app here. So you have everything you need, and it's not. It's not running on the local instance as it were before. Now it's running on a on an instance that has been installed for you, and then you're just um, using it. You get an option to like um, manage the app and see what what is installed, what what is going on there. So this was um, run after it successfully deployed. It installed some of the libraries that it needs, and then it says successful. And if that's the case should be able to then get the you should be able to use the app and then it says the patient will not be readmitted if we like uh, change some states function say probably start if then try to predict a gay and then it says the patient will not be readmitted let's try and check if we can get some other it. So if we like input uh, something that is not supposed to be allowed, we get an error here. Uh, so this is what is returning, and then the app is live, and then everybody can access it, can use it. Here, and then everyone has access to it and use it. And then that's how we like deploy the app to make it available for everybody to use. For the uh, building the uh, Docker image, you use the since the Docker file has been um, specified here, yeah. everything is working fine. You use the, uh, in my own case, for me to deploy, I mean, to build the model, I would use the uh, sudo docker build. Let me say, like, let's see. And then I give it a name. In my case, it's uh, diabetes. And then I can give it a tag, let's say latest. Uh, and then we can build the, the dots, which says like go into the um, directory to find the um, Docker file. If you found if you found the Docker file, um, go through these steps and build the image. So it goes into the um, Docker hub. It pulls the Python 3.7 version. Then it creates a working directory called app. It copies the requirements of txt. The requirement of txt is in this folder. So it copies it into the uh, working directory here. And then it creates the environment in that directory that you have um, created here. It exposes the 8501, which is like the default um, the default port that uh, Streamlit uses. And then it copies all other files inside this directory into the working directory called app. Then it creates the entry points like um, streamly run. So when it sees this command like streamly run, it knows that the stream is about to start because before you can like start a streamlit app, you do streamly run. And then this is like the entry point for that. And then the command that is supposed to run is the app.py. So if this file is not named app.py, like it's named something else, then that is the name you give here. And that should build the image. If I build the image, now it will take a lot of time to like. Um, install all of the um, dependencies and the rest have already built the image for. And then you can um, start the you can start the image using this uh, sudo docker run. 
then you just expose the ports that you need to expose and then that port should be uh, 8501 8501 and then clicking on, on enter it should then start the server for you without having to use a streaming to run out of pipe or having to do um, having to like have the files and then the code on your system so that's the essence of using the docker file to uh, package your model and then deploy it uh, any questions no questions okay so um, in absence of uh, no questions i think we'll continue our discussion on rocket chat and then for today, you will be expecting the interim submission. According to the detail that have been given on the Google Classroom, you are expected to submit uh, a report in form of a, you will get the report from the slide, which you need to convert to a PDF. And that's what you're supposed to upload to the um, Google Classroom. And then you will, uh, you will attach your uh, GitHub repository link to the second part of the submission. Okay, any questions on that? Too? If there is also any question or discussion from the challenge perspective, we can have. Yeah, so in case you're like facing any um, issues regarding answering task one question, you can like ask now before we end the session. Challenge deadline is not today. Challenge deadline is on Saturday. The interim submission deadline is today. And then it's uh, 8 p.m. UTC. Okay. You are supposed to complete task one for the interim submission today. So all the tags that are embedded in task one, you're supposed to do it, including tags one point two. It's PM. It's PM. You just. You're welcome. You can add um, other uh, variables as well, but you know, for like um, simplicity and then to not waste uh, too much of uh, time, we just ask for the uh, applications as well as the total uh, download and upload. And then one, one thing you should include in all of the notebooks that you have is uh, a brief summary of what the chat is saying if the chat is normally distributed or if they are um, positively um, correlated or you know like explain what you are doing or explain the result of your output and then try and leave them the the notebook as well include markdowns in your uh, notebook such that it's detailed and explain what you are doing at what stage and then it's easy for the tutors to mark as well Okay. So if you're answering task 1.2, uh, include a markdown that says this is task 1.2, and uh, you know solve the, the question, and then provide a little bit of explanation as to um, what the chat is saying. Most of the most of the um, question that has been asked requires like top 10, top 20, depending on what you are able to do, and they just like explain what the what the result is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? We have 40 seconds more to end. Okay, Mubarak. Yes, Mubarak. Okay. Yeah, thank you. My question is um, concerning yeah. the transport and so on. Yes. And the the file says <coughs> I will need to file the following information in the column. Uh, 
it's breaking up. I can't hear you clearly. Do you get the question? No, I didn't get the question. Yeah. Can you repeat, please? In the in the in the file that I have here, in task one point one. It says aggregates aggregate per user the following information in the column. So we have number of SDR sessions, session duration, the total download and upload, and the total data follow in yeah. bytes. <coughs> so are we to drop all other columns and focus on these four columns alone? I don't get the the sentence. Uh, in answering task one point uh, one, you're supposed to just like aggregate okay. on those columns. So if you like group by the unique users, you just just select the column that you are um, answering. So for instance, you are answering the uh, aggregates uh, by user, the XDR sessions. So you just group by the okay. users and then you select the uh, XDR sessions to answer that particular question. And then you move on to okay. the next question and the next question. So it does not involve okay, you to that's... drop any color. It's, you just have to like select the column that you are answering. Okay, okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's I, I... some sort of subsetting as well as Subsetting yeah, of your so data file. That's right. Um, okay, so we'll call it, uh, we'll continue our discussion on Rocket Chat. Um, do have a lovely day, everybody. Thank you for coming. Cheers. Okay, thank you. Bye.